What's happening everybody? It's Scott here from WFLBC and uh, today I want to talk about wildlife photography with Fujifilm X-Series cameras. Okay, so recently I've uh, made a bunch of videos about uh, Fujifilm X-Series cameras and uh, most of them are entry level. That's not generally what I shoot with. Like I love my X-A1, I love the entire X-A line. But when it comes to wildlife photography, uh, without that viewfinder, they just, eh, they don't really work because trying to shoot out like this with, uh, with a camera with no viewfinder to get any sort of accuracy in your shot is next to impossible. So, I have recently upgraded to the Fujifilm X-T20 and I have strapped to it the XF 100 to 400 uh, telephoto lens. I've had this lens for uh, basically since it came out. So I bought it, it's almost two summers ago uh, that I've had it. Absolutely love this lens. It's very, very, very good. And the combination of this lens with the X-T20 is absolutely fantastic. So in terms of wildlife photography, specifically for me, my favorite type of wildlife photography is birds. I love birds. Uh, we have all kinds of excellent bird watching areas here in Greater Vancouver. My favorite place to go is West Ham Island. There is a bird sanctuary there, a migratory bird sanctuary, George Rifle, uh, George C. Rifle, Rifle, Rifle. I'm gonna put it down below. Absolutely incredible. Ducks, geese, cranes, red-winged blackbirds, eagles, vulture. I've seen vultures there, which the poor little birds on the ground probably don't like seeing those guys. It's a great place to go, and uh, it's a great place for the family. It costs five bucks to get in. You can buy bags of bird seed. Uh, you can feed all the birds. It's great for kids. It's good to get out for a hike. It's got really nice views of the mountains, of the ocean, of the Gulf Islands. It's just a beautiful place. I, if you haven't been there, I highly, highly recommend checking out that migratory bird sanctuary. West Ham Island is a really cool place too. It's got this really neat one lane wooden bridge to get to it, which is, you don't really see that anymore. So that's really interesting. So I'm just gonna talk about my setup hardware wise here, what I use to shoot these pictures that'll be scrolling across as I'm speaking here. So like I said, I'm using the Fujifilm X-T20, which I've just picked up recently. Now I've made a bunch of videos about how I don't like the X-Trans sensor. That's not exactly what they're about. It's about how I like the non-X-Trans sensors in Fujifilm cameras better, but this X-T20 has an X-Trans sensor and I bought it, so take that uh, for what it's worth. Uh, this is a fantastic camera and it absolutely blows my mind what you can do with such a small camera. Uh, like I said, I've got the XF100-400. This thing is an absolute beast. It's a f4.5 to 5.6 aperture. Not particularly fast, but it does have really, really good OIS. I believe it's four or five stops. It's got uh, a bunch of manual controls on it. So it's got manual aperture ring. The zoom ring is nice. The focus ring is huge and big and rubber lined and damped. Uh, it's got some switches on the side. Uh, you can limit your zoom range from five meters out. Uh, and then uh, you can switch it over to have the full, or sorry, did I say zoom range? Focus range from five meters out to switch it over and have the full focus range. What that does is if you're shooting specifically birds or wildlife, um, it's not going to hunt between five meters and closer, which uh, a lot of longer lenses will tend to miss focus because their focus range is so huge. Um, so that helps get the shot. Uh, it's got a aperture switch on the side here, so you can switch from auto aperture to manual. Uh, it's got an OIS switch, so you can turn the OIS on or off, depending on what you're shooting. And then it's got this little lock switch here to actually lock the zoom ring to keep it from sort of flopping around. That's mostly for when you have it stored or you're walking with it. Uh, it's got this massive lens hood on it, which with this big, huge piece of glass on the front, that is absolutely necessary to prevent flare. It's just a great lens. It's a, it's a great lens. It's a lot of money. This lens is a lot of money, but at the end of the day, it will get you what you're looking for. It's got uh, the little foot adapter for a tripod. I never ever shoot wildlife with a tripod. So that's just on there to show you what it looks like. I'm gonna take that off and just put it over there. I never use this thing. 
Other things that I've got to make this camera a little bit better for me, for wildlife photography, and for really just personalizing it and make it my own, I have this metal hand grip on here that you can see uh, it's got a little finger indent. It sort of extends the bottom of the camera. This is uh, it's not a Fujifilm piece It's from newer which is uh, if anybody shops on Amazon You've seen that name if you look up photo accessories. It's absolutely Everywhere on Amazon the thing I like about this particular grip is that it moves the tripod socket over when it's normally over here, it's in the way of the battery door and the memory card slot. It moves it over here so you can actually, when you're not using a big lens like this and you're using this tripod socket, if you wanna do a long exposure or something or you're doing video, specifically video, and you need to change out your battery, you don't have to take your tripod base plate off of here to change the battery or the memory card. So that by itself is totally worth it. But for doing this long lens photography, having this extra grip on the front is absolutely critical. If you don't have that, it makes it very, very hard to hold this camera because it's such a small camera. Uh, what else do I have on here? I've got a soft shutter release, this little red button here. So this is just a rubber washer with a metal, is it brass? Anyways, it's painted red, but it's uh, it threads into the shutter release and it just gives you a little more feel and control over um, the shutter which is really nice. If you've never tried one, I highly recommend picking one up. Again, on Amazon, they're, they're really cheap. They're just a few bucks. Uh, I've got a hot shoe cover here. This one's uh, made out of wood, super hipster. And I've got the uh, rope uh, strap for throwing over my shoulder. This again, uh, there's a lot of really expensive rope straps out there. I can't recommend spending a lot of money on a rope strap because you can get these ones on Amazon for about $15. I'm gonna put all the links to the stuff that I have on this camera below in the description. I don't have an Amazon affiliate link, so I'm not making any money when I post these links. It's just stuff that I really personally endorse and I'm not gonna make any money off telling you guys to go get the same thing. Okay, so when I'm shooting birds, what do I use for camera settings? Generally speaking, I will set my ISO at 800 or 1600 and just leave it there. I will shoot uh, aperture priority. I will try to have the aperture as wide as possible. Obviously on a camera, or sorry, a lens like this, 4.5 or 5.6 is the widest it's going to get. The reason I shoot at such a high ISO in daytime is because I want to have a very fast shutter speed because birds tend to move around a lot if they're flying or if they're just hopping around, if they're flapping their wings, I wanna freeze that action. And the only way you're gonna do that is with a fast shutter speed. The only way you're gonna get a fast shutter speed with a lens that doesn't have a big, big aperture like this super telephoto is to boost up your ISO. I shoot with really high dynamic range. You can set it to auto uh, or different percentages. I max it out at 400%. I want a lot of dynamic range in these photos. I shoot in the Velvia color profile uh, for JPEGs because that is the most vibrant color profile that Fujifilm offers color-wise uh, that's already baked into the camera. Now I do shoot RAW and JPEG at the same time. So when you take a shot, it'll shoot a RAW, RAW file and a JPEG file simultaneously. Generally for my social media stuff, I just use the JPEG files and uh, quickly edit them in Photoshop Express or right in Instagram itself or a combination of the two. Photoshop Express is a great app for your smartphone for editing photos. It'll do, I believe it'll do raw photos as well, but if you're just posting them to Instagram or Twitter or Facebook uh, and you're not doing like super high resolution prints or features digitally, generally that's all you need. But I do shoot raw as well, just in case down the road somebody calls me up and says, hey, we wanna buy some of your photos for whatever, which actually happened to me recently. Uh, I was approached to uh, sell some photos for billboards and bus advertisements and some in-store advertisement for a local retailer. I couldn't make the timeline, they needed them that day, so I wasn't able to actually uh, do that job but it's a good idea to just have that back catalog of photos ready and available for if an opportunity like that comes around. That's a great tip. If you wanna make money in photography, get a big hard drive and save all of your original photos. Even if you haven't edited them yet, they're there. And if you need to use them, you've got them. It's totally do that. 
that's my setup. That's my whole setup for uh, for shooting birds. Composition wise, I mean, you can have shot. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. That thing just uh, comp stopped recording on me. Panasonic. Anyways, I'm going to be using this uh, XT20 to shoot um, these studio videos from now on, so that'll be nice. Like I was saying, uh, composition wise, uh, you can just get all bird, all bird in your frames. You can try to get in on their eyes uh, because birds' eyes are. They're absolutely beautiful. They've got all kinds of details and they are all kinds of different colors. Birds with red eyes are, are particularly interesting to me. You can sort of do longer shots with birds perched on things with some stuff in the background. Just play around with it. There's, there's no such thing as a, as a wrong photo. Obviously composition, there's things you do and things you don't do, but I mean, I don't know. Just just get out there and take pictures and you'll find that that kind of stuff doesn't matter. Now, one thing I did see when I was out shooting, which made me laugh, and uh, I see this every time I go out and shoot wildlife, particularly birds. Uh, there's a place in Delta, it's an organics recycling facility. It's on, I believe, 72nd Street behind the Boundary Bay Airport. And there's always just tons and tons of bald eagles there. So it's, it's sort of a, a hot spot for people with uh, big zoom lenses to go and take pictures of birds, specifically eagles. There's always a bunch of guys, and it's always guys. It's never, it's never uh, the ladies. The ladies got it figured out. They don't need to uh, dress up to go take pictures. But there's always a bunch of guys wearing camo uh, with big monopods and big rubber boots and or or big tripods, and it's it's absolutely hilarious to me. Why do you wear camo when you're not like? You th do you think the bird doesn't see you? Like, birds have amazing vision. <laughs> I just find that really funny. And then, as far as uh, tripods or monopods, birds are always moving, so why, why do you want to lock your camera to the ground? Like, that makes no sense to me. A monopod, I can understand a little bit more to reduce camera shake. Maybe you don't have a, an optically stabilized lens. Okay, that's fine. But a tripod? Mm, I don't get it. Maybe if you're taking video. I, I don't know, but... Uh, no camo, no monopods, no tripods. That's, uh, for me, that's <laughs> basically how I roll. Um, yeah, that's it. So Fujifilm X-T20, XF 100-400 millimeter, super telephoto lens, fantastic combo for shooting wildlife, particularly birds. Just remember though, the X-T20 is not weather sealed. The lens is, so it'll handle some splashes and whatever. You can get a camera cover for the camera. Um, uh, it's like a little sleeve to protect it. If you want uh, a full weather sealed setup, you're gonna need something like the X-T2 or the X-H1 or the X-Pro2. Those three are all weather sealed. Is the X-Pro2? I believe it's weather sealed. For me though, I, I don't like shooting in the rain, so I don't need weather sealed gear. It saves me a bunch of money. If it's raining, I'm gonna go get a coffee and then probably come home and watch Netflix instead of being outside getting wet taking pictures that I can take on another day when it's dry and warm. That's it. Um, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, tell me what you guys shoot with for wildlife photography. Do you use X-Series gear? Do you use something else? Are you a full frame uh, evangelist that absolutely needs those 42 megapixels to get the perfect image? I don't really understand that, but uh, maybe you're doing uh, skyscraper size prints and, and that's what you need. Tell me below in the comments or do you use your phone? Do you use uh, a bridge camera with a super zoom lens? Like I'm filming this right now on a Panasonic FZ FZ 300 which has a 600 millimeter equivalent uh, zoom built in with an f2.8 lens. Small sensor but it actually does really really well uh, in terms of bird photography. I used it a bit in Hawaii. Very impressive camera but it, it doesn't come anywhere near this big setup here. Thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. That's it. See you in the next one. Mom, mom.